How's your morning going? It's been a good morning. I know. I've been busy going session to session. Actually, I was at the lunch sessions that that elementary school that is in my district, the Vale Ranch makeover oh. one. And so that's my that was my director of uh, technology who was speaking, and then the 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 Vale Ranch principal. So I wanted to see all the what was going on there at Vale Ranch. Incredible transformation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, is my high school next? Like, what's going on? <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Seating, all the technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great stuff. I know. And what is it? 106. We got four minutes. I, I had some Hawaiian music. I'm gonna oh, can you hear that? I hear it. <laughs> I don't know how to hula. Do you do like a wavy arm or like what do you do? It's all interpretive, all the movements interpreting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna share my screen too. Let me get it up. Okay, hold on. Right, right. And I guess uh, everybody's, was, I guess, supposed to also wear like Hawaiian wear tomorrow. Because I saw Dennis Large and like at the camp, they always have like a day for Hawaiian wear. I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to have to wear Hawaiian wear both days, right? Yeah, same thing yeah. again tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> I'm going to get my little screen set up here. Hold on. Go. And people are coming in. Here we go. Oh, Kelly just got back from Kauai. Hey. I'm seeing so many pictures on Facebook with people in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm going to Puerto Vallarta next week. So, uh, you know, I, I, I'm always a big fan of being at the, the water, the beach. Um, if someone wants to take me to Hawaii with them, I can you know, jump in your suitcase. I'd love to be there. Yeah. So here, while we're waiting, I'm going to say, um, can everybody, I'm going to put it in the chat, tell us what you teach. And where you teach? All right, so I'm just curious uh, who's in the audience, All right? So if you guys could share with us uh, what you teach and where you teach, give us a little feel for what's going on and who you are. Woo! Oh, and Hammond, we got some people from Menifee, Hammond. Oh, third grade new virtual school. Wildemar, we got Holmes Cabrillo Point Academy Charter School, Dartmouth Middle School, right? Oh yeah. Oh wow. We got a lot of people coming from Cabrillo Point Charter. Moreno Valley, awesome. Oh, Mission Vista. I think that's in Vista, right? She's in Maui right now. We got somebody coming in from Maui. Awesome. Woo! New virtual school. Corona Norco. Oh, cool. Love the music. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we thought we'd get a little Hawaiian, you know, spirit going here, get get make us feel it is summer. Come on. We're like we all want to be at the beach and the, if you're at the beach here doing this, then you know, more power to you. That's pretty awesome. 
and vacation can be a state of mind sometimes. <laughs> right, right, right. Cool, cool. All right, we got all kinds of great people coming coming in here. Um, I'm going to get this up too. You guys too, down at the bottom is um, the, the bit.ly that gets you access to the slide deck. I'm going to put it in 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 the chat so you guys can have our entire slide deck because you're going to need to like click on stuff and look at stuff right so there you guys go um it is 110 might get my music back on you know i love me some bob marley that's for sure um but i'm going to go ahead and get started just so that you know our time together is short and we have a lot of action um going on for you this is going to be a the jam-packed session with all kinds of great resources. Uh, my name is Kristen Morales. I teach in Temecula. Um, and I teach high school. Uh, for the past few years, I've been doing geometry and pre-calc. I've been teaching 26 years, so I've taught everything from algebra readiness through pre-calculus and AP stats. Um, I had the fine pleasure of uh, meeting Kathleen because we're both the Riverside County Office of Ed Teacher of the Year Whoop, whoop, whoop. I, I know I it's Dennis I saw Dennis he's like oh and I introduced myself like in a breakout room he's like oh yeah I'm Kristen's teacher of the year I'm like oh yeah I'm teacher of the year too. I kind of forgot about that um but Kathleen tell us a little bit about yourself as well yes hello I am Kathleen Magania I teach at in CNUSD at Garrettson Elementary um I teach elementary level um I've taught second third fifth and sixth grade so I'm so excited to be here. Well, cool. Well, let's get started. Okay, hold on. My where's my clicker? Here we go. All right. So hey, I just want to point out, you know, hats off to all of you guys. First of all, for being here during summer, you guys are a dedicated bunch, and I appreciate that. Um, I just want to remind you guys, you know, we all just experienced probably the most challenging, difficult. Uh, year of our teaching career but um if you're anything like me you probably learn so much and so many tools um i want to let you guys know i have a master's degree in educational technology um and so i've been using chromebooks in my classes and the things i'm telling you about for years and despite where we're at whether we're online or whether we're in person the students haven't changed Right, but the way we communicate has changed, right? And so all those tools and things that you learned over this past year in a virtual environment definitely are applicable and should be used in your regular classroom. Um, if we're talking about mathematics and before, let's talk about math, like before we even get into any technology. And um, this is the true framework. This comes out of UC Berkeley and Michigan State. Not sure if uh, you've uh, heard about the true framework, but it has the five dimensions of a mathematically powerful classroom. And first of all is the mathematics, right? And as you move through a powerful math classroom and you start thinking about how am I gonna use technology to have a mathematically powerful classroom, I want you to think about these um, dimensions. Um, the math needs to be first and foremost. And so whatever tech tool you're gonna use, it needs to um, underscore and help develop the math that you're teaching of the time. Um, and how can technology help you make more meaningful connections with that? Um, if you're gonna in introduce a tech tool, um, how is that tech tool gonna elevate the opportunities for authentic challenges where students are doing the sense of the math making? And how is that, that tool that you're introducing gonna provide um, equitable access to the content, right? Where um, all students uh, have access in um, opportunities to participate. And as we go through this presentation, I, I think that's one area that technology is really powerful is, is giving voice to everyone in your classroom. Um, and when you choose a tool or decide to use it, um, what opportunities is that going to give for student agency, where students are the ones doing the thinking, where they're owning the math, right? And how can technology help you achieve that goal? Um, and lastly, what about formative assessment? How can we integrate some technology to get insight into what the students know and what they don't know, right? So let's uh, think about when we're choosing some tools to, to add to our routine, um, how does it add into these five dimensions? Um, additionally, too, let's uh, think about the 
standards for mathematical practice, right? This should be something that we're, we're thinking about when we're planning our units, right? And um, allowing students to make sense of problems and persevere in problem solving. Um, how can these tools help us um, create situations where students can construct viable arguments and critique the reasoning of others? And also the instructional shifts, right? That shift from same instruction towards differentiated instruction or where the mathematical authority is not coming from the teacher, but it's coming from sound student reasoning. Um, content taught in isolation to um, content with connected to prior knowledge. Technology can help us ach achieve these goals and do the things that we are already um, striving for in our classrooms, right? And I'm gonna put the bit.ly back in the chat and uh, Kathleen, if you could keep putting that back in, if people need it, that'd be great. Okay, so tech tools. First of all, I wanna give you like a tool belt, like a big toolbox of tools that you can use. So I have a few slides here. This first one has some of my favorites that I use all the time, um, including um, some of the ones we're gonna talk about today like um, Desmos or quizzes or Padlet. So um, right at the beginning of this slideshow are a lot of tools, including my school and my district is a Google Apps for Education um, district. So we use Google everything. And those are some of your priority tools that you should be using all the time. Have a, a whole variety of tools so that when you leave today, what's awesome is these are all in one spot here on our slideshow links to a variety of tools that you guys could use and include in whatever it is that you're doing. Um, so there's your toolkit, all those first few slides, right? Um, and, you know, when I first uh, started using technology, it started feeling like, whoa, there's a lot out there. Like, how do I organize all of this? Um, and what I uh, started using was a daily hyperdoc for students. Um, and I used uh, the simple, like, uh, explore, explain, apply hyperdoc. And I didn't create this. This came from, you know, the hyperdoc gals um, and their website, hyperdocs.co. Um, and I started using this every day as a kind of a if you think kind of old school, you know how like you, when you first started teaching, how you had your daily like lesson plan, like that little piece of paper that said what you were gonna do um, it, or what you even write on the board for students. Um, and I use that HyperDoc to um, plug in links to videos, um, links to my Pear Deck or slideshows, if it's a quizzes, whatever it is, my, my HyperDoc is my one-stop shop for student learning and students know, hey, the beginning of the day, open up the hyperdoc, whatever we're gonna do is gonna be right there. And here's some ideas of different things you can think about with uh, including for your daily lesson. Um, and I kind of think of the explore kind of like your traditional kind of math warm up. the explain kind of like the, the, the meat and potatoes of your, your lesson. And then the apply is some independent work or could potentially even be homework. Um, and so uh, I use HyperDocs, right? Daily HyperDocs. Um, here's just an example. And I also sometimes have a HyperDoc for the unit where there's activities that I'm gonna do over a course of one or two weeks and have them a bigger HyperDoc for that day. Now, what I started doing, um, even like, you, for students to access it is I put it in a Google Slides calendar and I have a link to my Google Slides calendar right there. Um, but I would take this daily hyperdoc, here's a picture or uh, the link to what we did in one day. You could see I start with like a GeoGebra, then I have my problem set. I, that day I did a Pear Deck and then their homework was an Ed Puzzle. So students know, okay, this is what we're doing today. And if they wanna look forward, or they want to look back, I have a calendar, right? And feel free, if you teach geometry and you want to use anything from here, go for it. It's, it's for you. And my, my calendar, I have that posted on my school website, as well as in my LMS. And if you go to, you know, any given month, um, the daily hyperdocs are there. I had a lot of really positive student responses with this um, where they could look ahead. I would post just week by week, but they could look ahead or they could look back. And what was really powerful about this Google Slides calendar is 
All of those support people, whether it be your AVID teacher, your counselors, your SPED teachers, your SPED aides, all of those people that are outside of your classroom that support your students, you can send them the calendar. And they know, and, and parents too, those parents are not inside your Google Classroom. You know, they're maybe not inside your LMS, but it gives them the, the viewpoint as to what's happening. So just a little tip there for uh, organizing your classroom uh, using HyperDocs and a Google Slides calendar. So without further ado, we're going to start with some elementary school math, and I'm going to hand it over to Kathleen, who's going to tell us some of the tools that she uses. And Kathleen, when you're ready for me to click, just tell me and I'll manage the slideshow for you. All right. Sounds good. So welcome, everybody. Um, so I'm coming to you with an elementary perspective of using all of these um, technology virtual tools. Um, so we all know we learn best, students learn best when there's a purpose for learning. So we wanna make this very purposeful, but also it's fun and engaging. So students are gonna learn more, remember more when they're doing these, um, these uh, I guess, virtual games, technology type games and resources. And so uh, these links, all of these um, ovals here have a link for you to click on. Um, and they offer things like visual models. Um, they offer conceptual understanding of the standards of the skills. And you can integrate these in any curriculum that, that your district uses. Um, and it also engages students that are working at different levels, um, different abilities, uh, allows them to work together to collaborate. And so um, the best thing about the virtual world is it does eliminate the need for you to organize pieces to games or um, have lost pieces. Um, I know I have a lot of trouble with my decks of cards in the classroom. So these virtual cards will never get lost, will never need to be sorted. They're always here waiting for you. And so here are links to some manipulatives that do offer that engagement. Um, you can use these for the introduction of a new skill. Um, students can practice skills um, with things like a fact monster. Uh, you teach third grade, fourth grade, even fifth grade. We're still studying those multiplication facts. Um, and also some of these offer some assessment. And so um, just to let you know what's on each of these ovals, a math playground, that first one is um, offers um, some, some manipulatives, um, student games. Um, Jeopardy, Jeopardy Labs allows you to um, prepare your, your own Jeopardy games on your own content, but I also put a link to a pre-made one there for you too. Um, Kahoot is um, a game that, that you can play. Uh, it is, does require every student to have a device. Um, your device will be projected, will show a question, students answer on their devices. Um, some miscellaneous slides there. Um, again, virtual cards, Flipgrid, which I'll also talk about on the next slide. Um, virtual bingo is a great way for you to create your own bingo game, not just traditional, but um, there's other variations of bingo that you can play on that site. Uh, we are teachers. I found a great site there that has some games that you can play using cards, using dice, again, using them um, 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 virtually. And uh, there's Fact Monster. Slides Carnival, um, I know that Kristen's gonna go into Slides Mania and so Slides Carnival is very similar to that. It offers you pre-made slides that you can just put your own information on. Um, Boom Cards, I love because it does um, give you um, pre-made slides with all different content, especially good for practicing math, math facts. And then again, some more manipulatives there for with Toy Theater. Um, and uh, there's, there's links for it there for you. Okay, so yeah, we can go to the next slide. So mm -hmm. here's just some examples. Um, so let's play. So students learn during play. And so there's some math games here, um, a link to some different games, but direct links to Place Value War and Race to 100, which are a couple of my favorites. And again, you can play with those virtual dice, virtual deck of cards. Um, I put a picture there for a jam board. It's called place value chart for build a number. This is great for kindergarten through sixth grade, um, depending on what place value you're working on. Um, so for example, third grade, we worked up to the thousands, um, didn't do the decimal side, but you can build a number um, using 
the cards or the dice um, and you take turns there's directions there but you take turns you pick a number first number that's either rolled or drawn from the deck of cards you and your partner each have to place it on your place value chart and then you get to the next roll the next card you place that next number and at the end after you've picked three or four cards whoever builds the biggest number is the winner so it's all about placement not being able to change where you place that number um, one of the students most favorite game and they're learning place value as they're playing um, down below there's another jam board there and those are some math reps jam boards that i'll have to do with place value and again you can use those virtual dice the virtual decks of cards um, and then flipgrid is a way that students can demonstrate their learning um, they can do this all in class all at the same time um, but the most important thing with these games is that a lot of teachers questions are what do students do while I'm working with small groups? And so while you're working with a small group, students can be playing these games and doing these activities independently or with a partner. And so that's what I love most about all of these games is once they learn how to play, they are so engaged and they will be working and learning while you're working with that small group. And so I wanted to show you an example of a flip grid um, of a student demonstrating their learning. So if you wanna click play on that, Kristen. The reason it is correct because the exponent is the number of times that you need to multiply that number. So you would do three times three times three equals three times three equals nine. And then you do that times three, which would equal 27. So student A is correct. Thank you. A is correct and B. Okay, so it's a real quick um, assessment where students, they, they do have a lot of fun um, showing their thinking, demonstrating their thinking, showing their learning. is correct because the exponent. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, I love that because Flipgrid is such a great way for students to explain what they learn. I mean, playing these these games are um, really fun and engaging, but then to do that metacognition, what did I learn? How do I know what I, what I learned? Right, exactly. Flipgrid, it's a great tool for that. Yep, definitely boosts motivation, um, enhances those concepts. So um, students have a lot of fun and you're able to, and they're able to demonstrate their learning with them also. So, all right thank you kristen <laughs> awesome and two all the all the resources that i put on those first few slides are used at any grade level or so and so look back to those and kathleen um, put the, her slides together with a few that she uses um, in her classroom but all the tools can really can be used for any grade level okay so let's keep going that is correct Oops, because there that's... he goes okay <laughs> all right so let's think about let's 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 Dive, take a deeper dive into some of these tools, GeoGebra. And I'm gonna go through the lens of a, um, a parallel lines and transversals unit, right? Common, like an eighth grade, also seen in geometry. So how, let's say you're planning a unit, you know what you wanna teach, how do you mix and match tech tools to dive into a unit? Well, GeoGebra is one of my very most favorite tools. And um, here's an example of a GeoGebra. What I love about GeoGebra is it's dynamic, right? So here's one that has uh, parallel lines and notice I can move the parallel lines. So it's so much more powerful than just giving them a static diagram where kids can say, well, oh, it's not just only for 135 degrees, but no matter what, where I uh, position those parallel lines, corresponding angles are always congruent. And then they can click on and maybe say, oh, Here's, the, here's what an alternate interior angle looks like, right? Here's what a same side interior angle looks like. And so what I'll be doing in my classroom is rather than saying, oh, same side interior angles are supplementary, I'll just give them the GeoGebra link, tell them to investigate, and then have a classroom discussion and say, well, what do you notice? What are the relationships between the angles? And students will be able to give me lots of different examples because notice no matter how I move those parallel lines, they always add up to 180 degrees. So when you're thinking about dynamic math, use GeoGebra. There's tons of GeoGebra apps that are already made, and I guarantee there's a small, small one already made to suit your needs. Another one I love to use all the time, and I've really moved away from um, traditional textbook homework. One of my favorite kind of independent uh, tools is Edpuzzle, where you can take any video from YouTube or even one that you make yourself and you know turn it into a small formative assessment or a homework where it gets graded for you. So here is 
let's just watch the beginning of an Ed puzzle. This is a two with Ed puzzle. I love, just so you know, I love these three. Mashup Math, one of my all time favorites to pair up with Ed puzzle. And if you're a little bit higher level, he goes all the way to calculus. Professor Dave has some great videos and Virtual Nerd. So, um, how would it work? Well, let's just watch one if you've never used Ed Puzzle. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me on this lesson. We are going to start out in my home state of New York, home of the Statue of Liberty, the world's best pizza, seriously the best <laughs> and the home of the world famous new year's eve ball drop at times square now we are going to go ahead and use google earth to take a closer look at the location of times square on the island of manhattan and now we can see from this map that the roads in new york city make a grid network of interlocking streets and avenues. Notice that our streets run somewhat horizontally and that they are all parallel to each other. And we should know that parallel lines never intersect. We should also notice that our avenues run somewhat vertical and they intersect our streets in a way that makes them perpendicular or that they form right angles. And looking at the map this way should help us to better understand why, for the most part, Manhattan utilizes a grid. Okay, so what Ed Puzzle is going to do is going to take your video and you get to choose where you want to stop it and insert questions, right? Um, parallel lines, never intersect, suppress, submit. The student gets immediate feedback if they got that right or wrong. And then what I'll start doing too is I'll start inserting what I like to think of as like those old fashioned textbook problems. So the way I get around just regular old textbook homework is I start with a video that has some of the concepts that I want them to learn. And then I make the questions be a, a variety of questions where you can include some of those textbook problems, but they're not just using a textbook. They actually have some support. And a lot of times what I'll do too, is if the video has a problem, then I'll make a new problem that's similar that is new not the answer is not in the video but they need to solve on their own so ed puzzle is one of my go-to things kind of for homework or independent study and just real quick um ed puzzle is a free tool um I, I like to call it freemium where it has it's free but it has if you get the premium version it has you know some more things to it the thing about the free version with ed puzzle is you only get 20 free videos which before my school actually purchased the premium one, I used the free version and I would just recycle stuff or I'd get rid of old stuff and get new ones. Here, what you're looking at is my grade book, right? It shows you exactly how many minutes the students spent watching that video and what their score was. So those numbers there are like 38%, 50%. Um, so you get an entire grade book. And what's awesome is Edpuzzle integrates with um, uh, Google Classroom, it integrates with Canvas LMS and a variety of LMSs. And if you assign it through Google Classroom or through your LMS, those scores populate automatically into your Google Classroom or into your LMS. So if you're making the questions so that they're multiple choice questions, it's going to auto grade for you. And what I would do in Google Classroom is I always make my assignments 10 points. Edpuzzle will automatically change it from a score out of 100 to down to 10 just by moving the decimal place over. So it auto populates in your grade book. Um, and at any time, uh, it's defaulted to give the students one chance at doing it. But at any time, you can go back and reset it and the students can try again. So there's Edpuzzle, love Edpuzzle, and GeoGebra. Um, Let's take a look at quizzes. If you've never used quizzes right now, we're gonna play a game of quizzes and we're gonna pair it up with the Fast and Curious Protocol, which is the edgy protocol. Um, if you've never read the, the book uh, by John Carippo and Marlena Hebron, um, tons of uh, protocols, which are um, 
lesson frames where you just insert the content, but the frame stays the same um, and they become a protocol for your classroom. So without further ado, let's go to quizzes. If you have not used quizzes, please, I encourage you to have some fun in math class and get some formative assessment data. Kids love this. There's like literally thousands of uh, pre-made quizzes in any topic you wanna to cover, or you can make your own. So I made this one. I'm gonna go in live quiz mode, which by the way, you could also assign it for homework to be asynchronous, but I love the excitement of a live class game. So I'm gonna press uh, classic mode up, and I'm gonna press continue, and boom, we're starting a game. Now you can go to joinmyquiz.com and enter the code 130692. Or if you're teaching remotely like this, I just go share via the link. I copy the link and then I put the link in the chat and please click on it and come on into our game of quizzes. Again, I play quizzes probably once a week or, or you know, and I'll show you how you can use it with um, the fast and the curious, but it's an opportunity for you to see what do students know. And a lot of times I'll do quizzes before I ever even teach them anything as a pre-assessment, just to get a baseline, where are students at, right? And as we go through this, because we are on a limited um, time here, I want you to kind of just go fast, okay? I know we're all teachers. We're, we probably are like motivated to get an A, but I want to encourage you just to, go through this so that we can look at the data because that's what I really wanna see here. Since I know most of you guys probably do know what parallel lines and transversals are, I'm more concerned about getting the class data. Okay, so I see I got 41 participants in my Zoom right now. If you're in a regular classroom, you know, you can just count up real quick how many students you have. And when you're looking at quizzes, you can see right here where that 23 is. That means 23 people have joined. So when you're in class, you can tell students, hey, come on, there's 41 of you guys, only 23 of you guys have joined um, so that you can see and know when all your students are in. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give you just about one, one minute to get into the game. If you don't get in, you can just watch along, but I would assume if you're not in, then you don't wanna get in. And I'll put the link in the chat one more time, and then we're gonna start the game. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started, so let's go.
Okay, we're gonna go for about one more minute. So make your final selections. And if you don't finish, that's fine. I wanna be able to show you guys the data from whatever we got. For people that are done, you can scroll down and see how you did and review the questions to see what the correct answers were. three players and then here comes the mastery party right this is telling you okay look at all these students who mastered the concept right and so I like to kind of like say woo, got some mastery party I got my top three winners but here's the deal for you as the teacher our time is precious right we we I run out of time every single day and probably my biggest obstacle is time why am I going to teach something my students already know right and if there's a variety of things they don't know. Let's start at the bottom and pick the things that they're struggling with the most. So after you play quizzes, if you look down at the bottom, do you see the percentages for each question, right? I can see 69% of my class got question one. Granted, I, we're going pretty fast here, but I can see, huh, question five, only 46% of my class got question five right. Immediately, that tells me, I better tonight go home and figure out whatever standard was associated with question five. And tomorrow in class, I can do some intervention on that. I can intervene. So it's giving me direction as to what I need to focus on tomorrow, right? And then the fast and curious protocol means you go back tomorrow, you focus in on the areas that the students need the most help with. And then here's the beauty. Fast and curious means they get to play it again. And I guarantee when you play it again, that after you intervene, you're going to see your scores go up. So the idea with this fast and curious protocol is to let them try it out, spend a day or two intervening, let them try it again. And then maybe even on Friday, maybe this is their quiz, right? I guarantee every time I play this, students say, can I play it again? And I get students who are not typically engaged, engaged because they are competitors, they're gamers, they want to win, right? So you can see how this feels different than me up at the board with those same problems. You could imagine those same problems up at the board, just direct teaching. It's a different experience for students. And I, enc I encourage you to, to play quizzes, to get the formative assessment and to direct the, the intervene immediately right? Because when I'm at the board direct teaching, I don't know who's getting it and don't get it. But when I play quizzes, I get the data and the reports, and this is an entirely free platform. Another tip, pro tip, you can make your own memes. You could have students submit pictures of their favorite animal sports, pictures of themselves, and you could make memes of them. So that would be a fun little way to like them seeing themselves while they're playing quizzes. So quizzes, highly recommend. Now, also another edu protocol, sketch and tell. This is a just a Google slideshow where you have students, you give them some sort of uh, prompt or uh, something to read, like math is fun about parallel lines and transversals, and then you give them a slide where they have to sketch out a situation themselves and then tell about it. How powerful is it when a student can? understand parallel lines and transversals well enough to be able to sketch it out and talk about it. So they get that own, their own um, learning and tell it to their neighbor or tell it to their group so you can have them in pairs. Or an alternative would be make one slide for everyone in the class and then have them share out to the class what they know because there's an infinite number of ways you can have parallel lines and transversals. And then they get to choose, am I going to talk about the 
corresponding angles, the alternate interior angles, right? So um, there's a couple ideas. And then last but not least, Quizlet. Um, if I'm in a unit where there's a lot of vocabulary, when I teach geometry, geometry is like a, a new language for them. So many words and vocabulary, and it, it's a building process. And if they don't understand the core vocabulary, then they can't do bigger um, theorems and proofs that are built on that vocabulary. So I use Quizlet, right? Quizlet uh, is a free flashcard, right? Where I can give them a flashcard. Maybe I have a little problem on there. Maybe I have some definitions where they can go home and use their flashcards, right? So when you're starting a unit, maybe you want to give a, a Quizlet flashcard set so to help them learn that terminology rather than spending a half hour in class copying down definitions, right? I think it's a better use of your time to give them a little flashcard set. So there are some tools there, quizzes, uh, Sketch and Tell, and Quizlet. Okay, next what I want to do is I want to move on to Nearpod. If you're not already in love with Nearpod, I'm hoping to convince you that you are going to love Nearpod, right? So my Nearpod um, is here, and I'm going to get this link. Let me grab the link and put it in the chat. Let's experience some Nearpod. So you can either go to join.nearpod.com and put in NRK3L. Or you can just click on that link I put in the chat. When I was teaching, um, you know, remotely, I would just put the link in the chat. And let's see who's joining in on the Nearpod. Um, and what I'm going to do with this Nearpod is I'm going to take uh, literally a lesson I found online called Dinky King. It was a paper handout. And I'm going to transform a paper handout to this Nearpod lesson right, where I'm going to show a lot of the different engagement tools with Nearpod so you guys can take a look, right, so I'm waiting for people to come into the Nearpod, right, AFSI says I'm in love with Nearpod, I know, me too, now Nearpod is one of those other things that's kind of like a, a freemium where you can get a free version um, and then the uh, that only holds a certain number of Nearpods and then uh, the premium version you have unlimited storage, so it's a great tool either way, and let's see how many people I got here. I got 24 people. All right. So Dinky King, this was, I found a literally a one page worksheet, which worksheets kind of like a four letter word. We know that we should not just be handing out worksheets, but let's turn it into an interactive experience. So I tell them, hey, everybody, let's learn about Dinky King and uh, Murio. And they kind of give me a funny look. I'm like, hey, you guys know who those guys are, right? And before we even start with it, um, what, types of, what types of angles are formed in a transversal crosses parallel lines? This is a Nearpod Collaborate board, and I'd like you on your Nearpod to tell us, I mean, I'm just curious if you know anything about parallel lines and transversals, right? So go ahead and share a thought on the Collaborate board. Um, Great tool to get students uh, thinking and collaborating and getting everybody's thoughts out there. So if you can go ahead on your Nearpod and add to the Collaborate board, right? Hmm. And I can hide the student's name. Oop. I just went from an, to anonymous mode. So when you're in Nearpod, you can show students names or keep it anonymous so students feel comfortable. I like how someone says IDK, perfectly okay answer, right? Some people won't have one and they'll have put a thought down. So Nearpod has this feature collaborate board where you can um, you know, throw an open-ended question out there and see what people know. They can also include pictures and whatnot. So great tool inside Nearpod to help spark conversations, see what people know, and for them to see what other people are saying in the class. Now, once you throw that out there, then you can go back and say, oh, I heard some of you guys talking about alternate interior angles or corresponding angles. So I like to see what they know and then share it with them. Because again, my time is valuable. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in class teaching them things they already know. And in Nearpod, you can put a slide up. That's just like a regular slideshow. It's like a one-stop shop, right? If you have a lot of links, you can put them all in your Nearpod. And students don't need to go to a bunch of different places. They can do everything in Nearpod. Um, so here, back to my Dinky King lesson, right? This is just a screenshot from the one page, like 
worksheet, right? And I tell him, hey, Dinky King is in, in Mario are trying to build this new game. The students laugh. They're like, don't you mean Mario and Donkey Kong? I'm like, no, no, don't you know? Dinky King is Donkey Kong's cousin. And I give them a wink and they kind of giggle and laugh, but they're designing a, a new platform game. And in case you don't know who that is, right? Here, I can include um, a little bit to a, a, of a video, right? So I have a, the beginning of a video here. So if you want, you, the students don't need to go outside somewhere else, you can bring in a video clip from YouTube or wherever you want. I typically play this little video from um, Pixels, the Adam Sandler movie that shows who Donkey Kong or Dinky King is. So another feature in Nearpod, you can bring in videos. Again, it's like a one-stop shop for everything you'd like to do. Um, for time purposes, I'm not going to play the video, but you can see how I'm starting to build my lesson based on their knowledge, set the stage for the lesson. And then I tell them, all right, here's a drawing slide. I would like you guys to find the angles. It's all built on parallel lines. This is a drawing slide. You can type on it, you can write on it. And if you guys have never used a Nearpod draw it slide, these are incredible for math, right? Because you as a teacher, when you're looking at my screen, right? Um, I have like a little whiteboard with every kid's work. And this was really engaging um, for students because they knew that, I could see what they're doing. It's, it, it lets you kind of walk around the class and see what everyone's doing, right? So take a moment to play around a little bit, maybe answer the question, find one of the angles, use the, the pen tool, right? The pen tool's fabulous for math or even the typing tool. And then once you think you have some of those angles, then I'm gonna share with you a student, right? So this really mimics kind of paper pencil work but you can do it in an electronic fashion in Nearpod. So Nearpod draw slides, right? Now I'm gonna um, wait for somebody to submit. The thing with Nearpod is you do need to wait for the students to submit their drawing in order for you to be able to share it. Um, so if one of you guys could actually, wherever you're at, just submit it, then I can go ahead and project it and I'll show you what that looks like. Again, now, you know, I know uh, you guys are all math teachers, probably want to get all the right answers, but for time purposes, if some somebody could just press submit, I could share their response with me, with me, right? And you can see, I can look up and down, see what everyone's doing. And I got one person submitted. Okay, so I'm going to click on this and I can share that with the class. And what I'll be doing while they're working is I'll be looking for uh, students who are sharing who have some, maybe some right answers, maybe some wrong answers. And what I'll do is I'll call on that student. I'll say, oh, hey, Kathleen, I see that you've submitted your slide. Can you tell us how you found these angles? And you would not believe uh, how much student voice I had all last year and before because I asked them to do the talking, right? Again, this is very different from me saying, oh, okay, everybody, 180 minus 35 is 145. No, I get students doing the work and I share their slides and then they talk about it. So if you're in a virtual setting, they can just unmute themselves and explain their work. Or if you're in a whole classroom, you this can be up on your smart board, right? And they can just talk to the class and explain their work. So it allows you to share their work right? And you as a teacher see what everybody's doing. And um, I actually like to um, open up uh, a whiteboard as necessary. If you look at the top of Nearpod, you can open up a whiteboard at any time. So if I open that up, I can say, okay, I just saw a misconception, you know, and I can start solving an equation. Okay, 3x equals 24. So it can be like on the fly, you can go ahead and open up this whiteboard right after a draw it slide and help clear up any misconceptions or add on at any time. So another great feature with, with that Jamboard, uh, Nearpod. All right. Um, Another thing you can do with Nearpod, which I do uh, really like, is I like this little time to climb game. It's kind of another, uh, you know, kind of Kahoot type game where you get to choose a character. So I'd like all of you guys right now to choose your little avatar, right? And um, 
then we're going to play a game where uh, it's like a little formative assessment. The teacher, you're going to get a full report when you're done showing what every kid got on this, right? What their score was and ask them some questions to check for understanding, but they're going to do it in a gamified way where um, they're going to move up a mountain, right? And the, the person who hits the top first are going to be your top players. All right. I got 16 players connected. Um and I got 27 people in the, the Nearpod. So I'm just waiting for people to connect. Again, when you're done with Nearpod, the one thing I really love about Nearpod is the reports you get when you're done. It'll give you an overall participation grade for students on how much they participated, which typically that's what their grade is for me for the day. If they participated 100% of the time, they get 100% for that daily activity, right? Um, but it also breaks it down. What was the student's score on things like time to climb or on a quiz or on a poll? So you get a lot of really detailed reports that helps you make decisions on what you need to do the next day in class, right? Yeah, the teachers, get the reports are awesome. And this is one thing I kind of, I, I used, I do like Pear Deck, but I really like Nearpod better for the reports. And I think I can do more with Nearpod than I can do with Pear Deck. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Again, we're kind of low on time. So I see 22 of you guys are in there. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Here you go. See what you guys can do with time to climb. comes out and it seems like they try harder and you'll as a teacher you'll get the reports for that now at the end i when i'm teaching this unit i always have them make their own game like their own dinky king game and here on your screen what i'm doing is i'm connecting you out to a whole nother website right a padlet um and that's a feature in nearpod so you can see what i've done there I've, i was able to get a video right a link to an outside website um a the gamified, you know, formative assessment, um, a draw it slide, all of those are in Nearpod, right? Um, and what you guys are looking at, just a, a shout out to Padlet. I've been a Padlet user for several years, probably 10 years. I love Padlet, right? Because I, students can take pictures of their work done on paper and post it up for all the class to see. And I've even had students like at the end of period two, we're, we're in this break, Tell me they want to stay for break so they can post on the Padlet. And I'm like, you do? He's like, oh, yeah, I got a friend in third period and I want him to see my work. 
right? Because I'll use the same Padlet for all my different periods. It really brings up the level and allows student, students to showcase their work. And I can set up my Padlet for students to be able to comment and give um, feedback or commentary to their classmates. So I use Padlet to showcase student work and allow students to comment and give feedback on there. Now, the thing with Padlet, I've had Padlet since it was free. It, it is paid now. Um, and so I have like 46 Padlets for free, but now it's only, you only get three for free. Now, here's what I recommend you do. This is how you use your pad. I did, this is, this one's not set up in, um, they call it shelves. Get your three free Padlets and use shelves, okay? The shelves, you can set up an unlimited number of shelves and make whatever you're doing that day or that assignment shelf one and all the kids go under shelf one. Your second assignment is shelf two. Your third assignment, shelf three. Your millionth assignment is the millionth shelf. So that one Padlet is literally endless. It's unlimited. So that's how you can take a free Padlet and make it limitless, right? And I usually have a Padlet for every period, but if you have let's say geometry, algebra one and algebra two, there's your three padlets. You can use those same three padlets over and over again if you use shelves, right? And each assignment is a new shelf. So um, yeah, yeah. So, hey, you guys, I'm still gonna keep going. I realize some of you guys wanna go. If you wanna leave right now, you will not hurt my feelings, um, but I have more to show you. So if you choose to stay, please stay, right? Because there's a couple more things I want to share with you. I promise it'll only be maybe another 10 minutes, but it's totally up to you, right? So there's Nearpod. And I just want to really quick show you with Nearpod. When I end the session, I can end the session, right? Yes. And then I can go back to my Nearpod and pull up my reports. I just want to show you the reports really quick, right? With the reports, I can do the, it'll show me exactly what came up. Here's the one we just did. So after class or during your prep period later in the day, I can bring this up and it'll show me the student participation there, right? Where um, general participation, um, the, the features, others, how people did on draw it, how they did on the collaborate board, how they did on the time to climb, or just the summary, right? So you can see how ev everybody, to what degree they participated. So that's kind of what a Nearpod report looks like. Okay, um, almost done for you guys. And let me come back over here. I don't know why this red dot came up here. Now I have a red line on there. Oh, well, okay, we're gonna go with it. Um, if you haven't been using Desmos, please check out Desmos. Desmos is another student voice tool that gives you um, a teacher dashboard. Um, and there's tons of pre-made Desmos like this Desmos Kung Fu uh, transversals activity. Um, if you click on that, it looks like this. This was made by Andrew Stadel. And it, you, when you go into Desmos, uh, the ones that are pre-made in collections, you can preview it and you can decide to use all of these or to um, edit them yourselves. I know we're running low on time, so I think I'm not gonna have you actually do the Desmos unless people really wanna go through it, right? What do you think, Kathleen? Can they just investigate that on their own? I feel like I'm running low on time. Oh, you gotta get your mic on, Mike. I can't hear you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've never used Desmo, so I'd love to see a quick demonstration. Okie dokie. All right, then. If you guys want to just do a quick demonstration of Desmos, then what you're going to do, and I can put this in the link, is here is um, I set up a, a session. So when you want to do a Desmos, you just use a single session code and it'll set up one of those sessions for you like I have set up here. And then you can get the student link and you can put that student link in your Google Classroom. You can put it in your LMS or I'm just gonna put it in the chat. And then your students click on it and they can go ahead and get started. So I'd like you guys to
to take a quick look at that. Yeah, and thank you, uh, Laurel. And anybody who wants to leave, please feel free to leave. You won't hurt my feelings, but if you wanna stay and see a quick Desmos uh, presentation, feel free to do so. And I got some ideas with Jamboard as well. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and start viewing the dashboard as students are coming in to the Desmos. One thing I can tell you is right, right here, if I'm displaying this, like I normally don't display it to students, but if you wanna display it to students like this, you can anonymize it, change everybody's name to a famous mathematician. And while I'm on the teacher dashboard, um, I can see which slide everyone's on. So I can see uh, where the blue squares are, where everyone's at. And I didn't um, paste this, but you can paste Desmos. So like students, maybe you only want them to do the first two slides and then stop and then have a discussion and open up more slides. So it's a way for student, student voice. I can see everybody's on slide one and you could go through all of them. I'm gonna get you guys going on just a couple of slides. Feel, feel free to try to the next slides, right? Or just a couple of them. And then I'll show you some of the things you can do with Desmos um, and what it looks like. Mm -hmm. Shows me how many students are on each slide, what they look like, right? And there's Desmos um, for all grade levels too. They have elementary school collections, geometry collections, high school collections, uh, middle school collections. Um, and a lot of them are pre-made so you can just use one that you want. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna go here. A lot of people are here on slide one. So if I go ahead and I click on that, you see now I can show what everyone in the class is saying, right? All of, all of these. All of these people are saying um, different things and what they're doing, right? So it allows you to open up a conversation in math to give everyone a voice. And this is so important. Um, when you're in person learning, all of us have that shy group of kids in the back that never raise their hand, but you know they have great ideas. Things like Desmos gives them a voice right, where it's expected that everybody contributes. And then you as the teacher can um, jigsaw classroom responses, right? And so I can see what everyone else is saying. Um, and talk about it, I can go to slide two. I can see two people are on this on slide two. I got one person on uh, slide four, right? And ex explaining it. So um, I could spend hours talking about Desmos, but the thing that I think is powerful is it gives every student a voice and it opens up what everyone is saying to uh, have the conversation. And you can have open-ended questions, you can have graphing, right? All kinds of great things you can do with Desmos. You can also use the snapshot feature where you can take um, snapshots of student work and kind of make little collections. And I'll do that where I get maybe a student who have two different modalities of thinking and showcase both of those, right? So there's a little, little taster of Desmos. Um, and if you wanna learn more about Desmos, I have um, videos and links right on this slide to help you with that. Um, last thing I wanna, or one of the last things I wanna talk about here is math reps. Um, I saw Kathleen had some math reps on there. Uh, my good friend, Lisa Nowakowski, who's the author, one of the co-authors of the Math Edition Edu Protocol book, uh, Originated Math Reps. And I, I'm actually in that book with my geometry reps. Um, uh, math reps and the math reps website this has math reps for all different grade levels, right? And it's the idea that you take a concept and you repeat it by changing the number. So how could you do that with parallel lines and transversals? Well, I have a math reps here and it's piecing together a lot of standards. It's a lot of concepts connected into one rep. And I could change the value of angle one and to have them find all the other angles, name off your corresponding angles, your same side interior angles. And I started doing these uh, math reps also on a Jamboard, 
right? I would give each students their own Jamboard with, with, and tell them, okay, I'm gonna change the number today, right? And with Jamboard, why I really like Jamboard for math is they can write, you know, 35 degrees. The pen tool is fabulous for math, right? They can also type if they wanted to say, okay, that's, you know, 50 degrees or whatever it is, right? So Jamboard. So math reps um, is an opportunity for a lot of grade levels to, to connect different skills together and then to repeat it. And you see as students understand the process, they get better and better at it. Um, last thing I want to talk about here is just Jamboard in general. Like I literally could not have survived last year without Jamboard. It is my go-to, I had go-to Jamboard. And what I do on Jamboard is I make a slide for every group and then each group posts on it. So this was one where I was doing Barbie zip line. It's a whole lesson on building and designing zip lines. And I create the template so that each group has the same template or the problems that they're gonna do. And then give the link to students during our, our Zoom, or I'd give it to them in class, make them all be editors. They have a group discussion, whether it be in person at their table or in their Zoom breakout room, and they prepare their slide. So if I'm doing Zoom breakout rooms, um, if you get Zoom breakout two, then you're on Jamboard slide number two. And again, I like Jamboard because you can see like what this group did is they use the pen tool for graphing, but then the typing tool for uh, the rest of their work. I wanna see, here's a group that actually just took a picture of their paper that they were doing together and put the paper in there so they can put pictures of their work. So Jamboard is a really versatile tool. Um, if you ever go into my classroom, you can see I have two full walls, eight or, or four full-size whiteboards. So half my classroom is whiteboards and kids go up there all the time. But Jamboard means I have an unlimited amount of whiteboards, right? And students will be working on their slide, but they'll go to other group slides to see what other groups were doing. You can see these two groups did it totally different. They decided just to stick pencil paper. This group decided to type it up, right? Um, and what I'll use Jamboard for a lot too is if we're doing, let's say, a chapter review, I just jigsaw the problems, put the problems on the Jamboard and students work in groups to solve them and then share out. And then the whole class has access, which is actually, in my opinion, more powerful than the whiteboard because now after school, they can look at it and they can go see the solutions to all those problems. So um, there's Jamboard. I had a Jamboard for you guys to use. If there's, if you guys have a question, if you would like to post on this Jamboard, let me grab that link. Um, it's in your slideshow. I'll take a look at it. I'm so sorry for uh, going over like this, this presentation, I normally do an hour and a half. So the fact that we did it in just like an hour, a little over an hour, it's great. Um, but I did have a Jamboard link on there. Um, Kathleen, can you put that Jamboard link in the chat if people want to use it um, to tell me something that they'll implement into their lesson or design or teaching? Maybe one wow moment, any logos that they were going to use because of that session or one question they still have. Thank you. Right. And there's the jam board, right? And there's the sticky note too. So you can use the sticky note as well if anyone uh, would like to jump on there. I got view, it says view only. Oh, is it on view only? Okay, hold on. And pro tip with students, here's what you do. You leave it in view only before and after class, but during class, just like I'm doing now, I change it that anyone with the link can edit and then copy that link. It should just be, if you update it, uh, it'll be there. And I'm gonna put the new link in the chat. I did that all last year. And what the reason why I do it like that is um, I wanna monitor what students are saying. Not that I think I have any class clowns, but I might, who knows, okay? And I don't want them editing the Jamboard when I'm not viewing it. 
So I, I make it view only before and after class and editable during class. So um, if you guys would like to add anything, jump on the Jamboard. I had three slides there. Better try out the sticky. Yep. Can't wait to use more Nearpod, yeah. Right, and two, if any of you guys want to unmute yourself now and just ask a question, I'd love to answer it for you. I was just curious, what, what are some of the similarities and differences with Nearpod and Pear Deck? Because I've okay. only had experience with Pear Deck and like we use that religiously. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so I'm just curious, like what, what are some things that maybe one doesn't have or they both have or anything? Okay, so um, Pear Deck and, and Nearpod both have that draw it slide. So for math class, I think that's of critical importance. Um, and Pear Deck, you, you know how you build it like in Google Slides, and then you have the Google Slides add-on for Pear Deck. In Nearpod, if you have the free version, you, you can't build it in Google Slides. Building it in Google Slides is part of the premium Nearpod version. But like the way I built it for you guys, I built it using all the built-in Nearpod tools. Nearpod just came up with a new feature, which as, as a, a co-teacher, which was all of my, you know, I collab with SPED teachers, probably three out of my five periods a day. They want access to all the teacher features. So Nearpod now has this new feature where you can have a co-teacher who gets the reports, who has access, who can actually co-teach with you on a Nearpod lesson. Um, and I really think Nearpod has um, with like, it has like the polls, the, the, the time to climb, the embedding the video. I, I just, I used to be, a, you know, all about the Pear Deck, but now I'm kind of all about the Nearpod. I feel like it's um, more powerful. The other thing I really love about Nearpod is they have a huge library of pre-made stuff that you can edit, right? So a lot of times you'll be teaching a topic and you just go into the Nearpod library and search it up. You find something that you like and is ready to use or something that has a lot of components that are good and then you can just build on it. So I really think the Nearpod community and the Nearpod library um, has a lot of resources that are makes your life easier already there. Yeah, they're fabulous library is is really great okay awesome mm -hmm. thank you and yeah. then can you do because i know like what i do like about um hair deck is being able to um like it's the same idea right that nobody can see them but i can see them or is it just once you make them anonymous nobody can see until you turn it back on once i make it anonymous i i can toggle it on and off at any point right so um, you know, the free version of Pear Deck is only anonymous, and then the paid version has the student names on it. Um, in Nearpod, you can, you can it, the free version, you can be anonymous or have the student names on it. So that's a, maybe a benefit, so you can see. I also, again, really like the reports. The Nearpod reports, I think, are superior than Pear Deck. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to play with that then. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Thank try it out. Much. Yeah, no worries. Yeah. Other questions? Yeah. All the reports. Okay, so here you guys go. I'm gonna put this here. I am on Twitter. I would love for you to be, you know, be my Twitter friend, right? Ask me questions, uh, share ideas at Kristen Morales one, um, and feel free to, connect. I would love to connect to you in the future. And thanks for sticking around. I appreciate that. And I really hope that your upcoming school year is great. Um, Kathleen, any closing words? Yeah, no, just thank you everyone for being here. And I appreciated presenting with you, Kristen. So thank you. All right. All right, you guys, thank you so much for coming. And, and uh, let's, let's connect on Twitter so we can stay connected and learn from each other and have a great afternoon. Thank you. Bye.